welcome to Theory Craft. My name's Ben. Over there is Jack, my co-host with his cur uh, cuddly, furry little friend, Boris Johnson. We are two dudes and a furry little guy who rant, rave and ramble all things TV, TV sci-fi series gone by, as well as movies as in the past. This week is a bit of an obscure favourite of mine. Not much of Jack's, but it is one of mine just for the fact that it's absolute cringe. The movie series known as Gremlins. So, for those of you who may not be aware, Gremlins was a movie back in 1984 that had the premise of these cute, squishy, little furry things that had three instructions in terms of how to look after it. The fact that it came from China was a bit of a iffy thing regardless. Yeah, the guy that a lot brought of bad him stuff's come from China recently. <laughs> well, yes. Well, this is why I thought it'd be quite an iffy but ironic <laughs> subject to go over, given and what's been going two? on this year. So the other two it comes from China. It came from China. It looks kind of bat-like anyway in terms of design. <laughs> and three is the fact that it the guy that like gives the main character the creature known as a mogwai is probably the most generic name for Hollywood Asian people, Mr. Wing. <laughs> I just... Or Mr. Wong? <laughs> no, he was Mr. Wing, not Mr. Mr. Wong. Wing. Mr. Wing. Wing. He, was, he was winging in it, I'm sure, all of it. But there we go. For Christ's sake. <laughs> but the premise behind Gremlins was that you could essentially get this very obscure little creature that was cute and adorable and was low maintenance but you had three rules in looking after it mm -hmm. you could never feed it after me midnight never get it wet and you can't let it in direct sunlight that was the three basic rules that you had to go by so with time so with time zones and sunlight it's a picky vampire <laughs> <laughs> oh come on i got a point yeah no no that's a fair point but <laughs> I think the problem is with the whole concept of the rules as a thing that a lot of people I've seen nitpick in this film series is does it know when it travels time zones? Yeah, so, that's what I was just about to bring up. What happens if like someone takes it on holiday? Well, I don't know. Like This is what I've always wondered because technically, if because America has, what, at least four different time zones? Because it's quite a big place. Well, yeah, I mean, you got, I think it's like, say New York, for example, is about five, six hours behind. Yeah. But my point being is the fact that as long as you kept going each hour, you could technically be within the same hour as you, like, went across America. And then it's just, like... Does it depend on it being midnight as in where you are in location, or is it midnight in terms of the fact that it's from China? And because the creature comes never, from China. And obviously that's never specified, which I can imagine, so... Yeah, it's... The thing is, I've seen clips of the first movie, because for whatever reason, here in the UK, we always seem to have the reruns of the second movie on Channel 5, God yeah. knows how many times, but the first movie is rarely shown. And I don't understand the logic of British television, whether it's just the fact that they couldn't afford the first one, I don't know. But the ending to the first one has no link towards the second one, other than the fact that it has the same original guy that has uh, Gizmo, the Mogwai or Gremlin, whatever the fudge you want to call it, and then you also have Mr. Wing, the guy that's responsible for him being in America in the first place. That's the only minor correlation between the two movies. The rest of it is just utter nonsense. I mean, the thing that I love is, at least in the second one, they tried to make the whole idea of the Gremlins a bit more terrifying, but it outdone itself when they just mutated into random things to the point where the main evil one becomes super intelligent and starts singing Broadway shows. 
I think that, but the the one that makes me laugh most of all is there's one that ter- that has a sex change because it has it drinks an elixir of female chromosomes for bizarre reason, and it turns into a female version of the gremlin. And then it was a few years back. Do you remember when Nicki Minaj had that bright green hair? Yeah. I kid you not, everyone made a meme out of her looking exactly like that gremlin. Oh, God, but yeah, but only thing is if people have forgotten about like the whole sex change thing, well, you've now been reminded now. So let's just wait in the comments for when the snowflakes get upset about that. Oh, God. <laughs> just leave it be, folks. This was the 80s. It's not my fault. It's the 80s, okay? Anything that goes wrong on this channel, we blame on the movie, not ourselves. We but hey, ho. Them- yes, exactly. But the thing as well is the the rules behind it all was a bit of a iffy one regardless because it never specified until it actually happened what would happen to them. So when the creatures get wet, they multiply like bunnies somehow. They literally fire off furballs off the back of them, which seem to pupate into new gremlins or new magwai or whatever the hell you want to call them. Uh. But it's just like... Well, if that's the case, then how the fudge do you, like, keep an eye on them? Because, obviously, most living things need drink. Like, they need water. So, I'm trying to understand the logistics of it. How do they not get wet to not... You see where I'm going with this? Like, (laughs) how the hell does something survive if it can't get wet? It needs drink, but it can't get wet. Otherwise, it multiplies. It's like when you hear of a real life condition, which it's a very rare condition, which it, this is actually real. When have you heard about it? When certain people are allergic to any kind of water, even their own sweat and tears. Yes, yes, it's a very weird genetic defect. It's like the body rejects it or something. But it's one of those things where how do you logically get around that? Like, unless they build, like, really tiny straws, because the thing itself is not that massive. Like, it's literally the size of Boris. No, and then, like, yeah, I actually, it's only just recent, it's only just coming to my mind. Like, the Gremlins, and the, you had, like, kind of, what I call them, the knockoff ones, which were, like, what were they called, Furbies? Uh, something? yeah. Were they called Here Furbies? Here we go. Yeah, this is what I wanted to try and cover today as well. So... Obviously, Gremlins came first, but I said to Jack the other day that I am damn sure that the toy from the 90s, known as Furbies, was the ins- was inspired by Gremlins, okay? Oh, so yeah, of let's just show you everybody at home how Gremlins, the cute version of Gremlins, looks. You so, kids probably, like, pre-2000, probably don't have a freaking clue what we're on about. <laughs> so there we go. This is Gizmo. <laughs> Unbelievably cute, looks terrified. If anything, it just looks like a hairy version of Yoda. Yeah, Yoda's like cousin twice removed. <laughs> <laughs> Alabama cousin. <laughs> yeah, like Chewie got Chewie and him got Chewie and uh, Yoda species got a thing on. <laughs> <laughs> wow, bang. Choke. Uh, <laughs> so that's the general gist of what our gr- uh, little friend is supposed to be bu- apparently so yeah. and then we get let me just double check so this ladies and gentlemen is an annoying little toy that everybody in the 90s had my mother was obsessed with them we had two and it did my friggin nutting every time they went off because I think but the, it doesn't shut up for ages. No, no. But the thing is, as well, <laughs> they had the voice like the aliens from Toy Story, where we went. Oh. I remember when I was a. Oh. I remember even when I was a kid. For some reason, I had one when I was like really young. I don't know why I remember this, but I remember I used to get so annoyed with the freaking thing. It's the slightest <laughs> little nudge, the thing goes off. And I yeah, remember, I think I actually went into the back of it and tore out all the wires. Just to get <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, disemboweling Furbies. I think that's a hobby. They in were itself. sodden annoying. Like Tamagotchis. Who the hell invented that annoying piece of crap? <laughs> I don't know. But the thing is, Furbies still exist now because I saw an advert for Christmas this year that it worked with iPhones. And They're I'm just still like. 
Yeah, they're oh, still around. Gosh, just about as useless as the pet rock. <laughs> Yeah, see, you say that, but you can actually buy that on Amazon. Uh, it like on Amazon, you can buy a pet rock. Oh yeah, but the pet rock's new now because it's got a USB port for absolutely no reason. Well, it's probably got a secret virus in it, but there we go. Yeah. <laughs> um, but going back to this movie, Gremlins, it was meant to be a comedy hit, a horror series. But if anything, it just turned into just pure cringe comedy fantasy. Yeah, it was. Like, by the time the second movie came along, it was 1990. So it was the year before I was born, and it was many years before Jack was even a thought. Six but, years. Yeah, exactly. But the second movie came along with the idea that the kid had basically become a grown-up and he had a job working for this toy company which was somehow experimenting on stuff in the basement because plot because and, just plot logic yes and basically he goes down to the lab one day because and comes across gizmo because for whatever reason gizmo's in the lab they've been tinkering with him and he liberates him but not before he gets spilled on by a vial of water and all the evil ones come off his back once again, and then they mutate, and then they mutate again. And the the thing is, there is a prequel animated series coming out either this year or next year in America on one of their many streaming services, and it's meant to be set in 1920. So it's about 100 years ago, give or take, and it's meant to be set in China. So it gives a proper origin story to it all but i'm just hoping that they try to make it more of a horror thing than a comedy thing because the comedy isn't even that funny it's just slapstick where like oh no this furry little creature can't get any water on it glug, 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 glug. Boom, boom, boom. it's literally that sound effect when the verbals come off it it's I suppose you can go for like kind of the more horror theme, you know, but except I I just see it going a bit more in the way of I know some people were definitely scared of when the Chucky films came out, but I never found Chucky scary. I never saw why people were so afraid of it. I just I didn't get it, but maybe that's probably the only way they can go, I suppose, with Chucky or like well, with uh, Gremlins, sorry. Well, the thing is, I'd argue because we're a different generation, the whole art of what a film is obviously progresses over time. So what we find scary is nowhere as sophisticated, well, sorry, is more sophisticated than the movies that our parents find scary because they obviously didn't know anything better. But it's just one of those things where... You get films like Chucky, where it was a brilliant concept, but it can get done to death. Like they did a reboot of Chucky last year, or was it the year before? The year before, I think. And they basically did away with the whole actual plot of the Chucky and basically just kept the one generic thing was the fact that it was a Chucky doll, but it had an AI in it which went rogue. But it's like Okay, like I understand you're trying to make it more modern, more scary, but even every review, even the actors in it said that it just didn't have the same feel to it because it just ruined the because point not, of the movie. It's not yeah. But the thing we've said time and time again on this channel is that Hollywood has done everything to death to the point where they just reboot everything to try and make money because they think, oh, well, this went on for so long, it must make money, so therefore we can keep making money. But it doesn't work like that. Yeah, so basically, it's kind of just the, seems to be the way the series and films are going, like going, oh, it worked once, let's just do it again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the thing is as well, you got... you got so many Terminator movies, you got so many Alien movies, you got so many Predator movies, and it's just like... Why? It's not that scary anymore. Everything's been done to the point where you know what's going to happen. Well, with the Prometheus, with like the, uh, it took me ages to work this out. The Prometheus films before, which are before Alien, 
mm-hmm. um, because Predator is a crossover. So yes. pre- the Prometheus films were based before Alien, which I actually enjoy. Though I mm-hmm. actually enjoy those whole those set those sets of films, but it just seems Alien after about two or three, just it was just like yeah, okay, maybe one, two, and three. Those are like the main films which you get. You get. Like the yeah. first film, you get the middle, which is filler, and then you get like a sequel, which is you get the ending film, which is just like a big blow off extravaganza. But then you have certain films which just want to go on and on and on to the point where it just loses a lot of its mystique that it had. Yeah, I mean, it's like we've said time and time again how the Saw movies have just done it, they're not that scary anymore. Oh, they sucked. It just they wanted to carry on and on. Like the guy died, but they didn't actually die. And then he was. And then he died again, and then didn't. He had this weird apprentice and everything. Then it was whole thing of his family, and it just it became a confusing mess. (laughs) Yes, but going back to Gremlins, like the whole idea of it being a prequel thing, I can understand the reasoning behind it because it may give more of a story to the creature because there wasn't really much of it in the original movie or the sequel. It was just a cute, cuddly thing that can go... Yeah. But, well, that's sort of most of the wildlife down here in Devon, but there we go. (laughs) Um, But the thing is, like, the whole idea of there being Gremlins 3, which is meant to appear in the next couple of years as well... I would love to see them make it a proper horror series, but I don't know if it would work because it's become such a comedy thing that to Joan flip it on its head and make it go to a horror what it should have been from the beginning, people are going to be like, oh, shoot, well, this isn't what I'm after. No, which is, I'd struggle to find anybody that would actually take a horror gremlin seriously. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the thing is as well, is like they're, because of the tiny size of it, it's hard to tell, like, take them seriously in terms of it being scary. Like, a lot of the scenes where they attack somebody, you never see any blood or gore because it's a horror comedy series, like, they can't do too much gore. But I would argue that would be more of an interesting thing to try and see, like, how vicious these little creatures are. Yeah, although, like, if you're going to go for, like, that whole that whole scope, I mean, if we could sort of just go back to, I think, like, the the 90s, not early 2000s, but it might be, I can't remember the dates, but you have certain series of films which might scare away a bit. Like, we mentioned Chucky before, which mm-hmm. I didn't find scary whatsoever, but there you go. But then we also had things, like, back in the day, a series which you kids might not remember because you may have only watched the film, but we used to have a series called Goosebumps. Oh, yes. And like we used to have, and like, even though it was like looking at it as an adult, it was craply done. It was rubbish. But yeah. at the same time, I can still get to this day why it was scary. So you even had a ventriloquist dummy, which didn't do much, but you could believe it so much. So maybe you could go for that same kind of feel. Well, yeah, this is it. Like,. There is only so much I think Hollywood has in terms of a genuine idea anymore. And the thing is, I think horror movies have been overdone. Like, I cannot remember the last time a horror movie was genuinely surprising, the like scary. Well, it's I just tend to find like when we spoke about horror films before when we did that list of horror of horror films. I just find that now horror films have just become so predictable that you could like you could tell the way the film's going to go just by the trailers mostly alone. And yeah. it's just so it's just too predictable and you find that most horror movies now you feel that they're going to be inspired by a previous horror film or it's just going to carry on like the same kind of formula as it always has done which just isn't interesting anymore. I mean, it's like they, there was that very interesting horror movie that came out in 2017, Happy Death Day, which, as a premise, was quite a clever, unique idea where it was like she kept living the same day over, kept dying by the I, serial killer. I got it. It wasn't, it wasn't terrible. It wasn't terrible, but it kind of felt a bit flat. Yeah, this is the thing. Like, a lot of horror movies just 
don't have like the, a good ending anymore because they're trying to hide too much from the trailers. But it's like if you look at classic horrors of old, you knew who the bad guy was, you know what the bad guy was capable of. You just had to worry whether or not the person would survive. That was the whole point of a horror movie. Exactly. But now it's the point where you can guarantee they're going to survive, but you're trying to figure out who the bad guy is. And it's like, but why would I want a who done it? If I wanted that, I'd go and watch a crime movie or whatever. Like, why would I want to see a who done it for a horror? I I don't know. But there was one question which I don't actually know the answer to. But so you said the free w- rules about the gremlins were don't feed them after midnight, yep. don't leave them in direct sunlight, and don't get them wet. Yeah. All right. But what happens if you feed them after midnight? They get wet, and you get put them out in sunlight. Just for example, I know it's impossible after midnight, but let's just say it's not artificial sunlight. What well, happens if all those three things happen all at once? Well, so if you feed it after midnight, it mutates into the like ghastly version of the gremlins. You get where it multiplies, and then for whatever bizarre reason, is that when it's the furry version, it's just like the sunlight is quite harmful in terms that it just makes it blister. But if it's the mutated version, it makes them just crumble to dust like vampires. Right. <laughs> I know, this is the thing that I just don't understand the entire logic of this. Because let's just say, for instance, that this creature is meant to be nocturnal because of nature itself. Obviously, it can't go in direct sunlight, so it's had to adapt to be awake at night time so there's no sunlight to harm it. It would then therefore mean it would have to eat when it was dark. You see where you, where I'm going with this? Like, there's a bit of a plot hole logic in terms of like, if you can't feed it after midnight, then the not being able to be in direct sunlight thing contradicts that concept. Now I'm wondering. Now I've got a question in my head. Like, what happens if, like, let's just say for whatever reason, astronauts want to see how they cope in space, considering that astronauts see on the International Space Station. I can't remember how many times it is, but I think they see at least. Six or eight like days in a row, like mm. they see the sunset at least six or eight times, like in a day. So, how the hell is a gremlin going to cope with that? Especially, what time is it even going to be? Because time passes differently. So, how would that work? Good question. <laughs> so, I just got... send a in space. What would happen? <laughs> See, this is where I just had a random thought in my head that you could remake the Alien movie, but just use Gremlins instead of Alien. <laughs> I would actually watch that. <laughs> yeah, but I just, I can imagine like a cute furry little thing just bursting out of someone's chest going. <laughs> yeah, because just like, yeah, because only thing is just because of all those three things that happen. All right, so it's going to be in direct sunlight. Let's yeah. just say you, sh- let's just say you manage to have a space bubble, which obviously because there's no gravity. Mm. You push a bubble in, put like push a bubble into its face. For some, <laughs> if whatever time in space is midnight, and it doesn't know how to react, and just goes. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I mean, that's a fair point because obviously, I mean, it depends on like because obviously when you're on space stations, they like, they don't have the panels open all the time for sunlight because otherwise you'd be cooked to death. So. As long yeah, as you're in space, space is weird because space is so much colder. Which, because it, it's really like because with like the atmosphere and everything, we got the sun that protects us. But mm. because space is so cold, you would freeze to death. You would boil to death at the. You would freeze to death and boil to death at the same time. Yes, <laughs> um, I mean the thing is. The, the sunlight thing would only happen if it were like someone left the panel open for the thing to see the sunlight. The water thing, I think, could easily happen because when you're in low gravity, there is like no pressure on the water. So it turns into like a constant bubble to a degree when you have water in space. Yeah, if you see so, astronauts trying to wash their hair in space, it's bloody fascinating. It's very it's bonkers. It looks like they're washing their hair with jelly. Yeah, it's like a bubble. Like, it's weird. 
it is absolutely bonkers. But the whole feeding it after midnight thing, again, is like the one rule that just never makes sense throughout the entire... I don't know why they added that in. Because if they come from China and you send them somewhere else in the world, you're going to have a different time zone. So how the hell does that work? Are they accustomed uh, to just preset to China's midnight? I don't, or? I don't know. I mean, the thing is as well, like, as far as I'm aware... Obviously, the whole concept of jet lag is the fact that your body's rejecting the whole idea of the new time zone because you've travelled, but you've lost exactly. the time. I mean, the thing that they should have done, I think, as the rule instead is that you couldn't feed specific things because at least then that would have been more interesting than just saying, oh, you can't feed it after midnight. Why yeah, not just... that would have made a bit more sense. I mean, they could have said, like, don't feed it cheese, because that would have played off the whole idea that cheese gives you midnight uh, nightmares. And obviously it doesn't. Do you want to know why everyone believes that concept? I have never actually heard of this, but go on. So the whole reason why... This is the most random tangent for today. The, mo the generic idea that you get nightmares be if you eat cheese before you go to bed is from... Uh, Christmas Carol, where Scrooge eats a slice of cheese before he gets seen by the three ghosts. Yeah. So everyone's ever since just associated the idea that if you eat cheese, you get nightmares like Scrooge. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. But this is where my idea that if you were to feed the gremlins cheese, then maybe it mutated instead of it just being, yeah, just don't feed it after midnight. Like, how soon after midnight? That's the other thing that I'm trying to figure out because technically it's always after midnight. Yes, true. <laughs> this, this is the one rule that I've been struggling for years to comprehend because does it mean, does it mean like it's when you go swimming, you can't eat after so many minutes before? So you can't go swimming after so many minutes of eating because you get cramps or something. But that, although random tangent, that's actually not true. No, it's not true. It is basically because a way of yeah. They say don't you can't go swimming for half an hour for like after you've just eaten food. Food doesn't take half an hour to digest. It takes like six hours or so yeah. or longer. It is basically a generic idea of grown ups go just. Don't do it yet because we're too stuffed from food. Yeah, basically. It's just an old wives' tale. So kids, yes. nothing to worry about. Go swimming as much as you like. You might feel a bit queasy, but that's it. Yes. But if they were to do Gremlins 3 as an actual horror movie, I'm trying to think logistically what actors would be quite interesting to have in to be a part of it in some way because... I don't even know if the original actor's around anymore because I don't. I can't even remember who was in it because, as far as I'm aware, it wasn't a big thing. Otherwise, you just yeah. Even if it was going to be a horror, because he did like a horror movie per se, but unfortunately, he's no longer around anymore. But can you imagine Robin Williams in a horror film? Oh, God. The Gremlins. That would be so funny because, ah. Uh... I mean, I mean, would you have it be that he was the guy that got the gremlins or would be the guy that was like just prior experience to having them and like warning people not to do anything? Prior experience, I think. Mm. Because I think if that was the case, he'd be a bit like what he was like in Jumanji, where he's like completely stark raving mad. Yeah. Oh, God. That was a hell of a movie. Like, well, when he was like a absolute lunatic, crazy person in 24-hour photo. Yes. Uh, I'm trying to think who would... Uh, trying to think who else would be quite an interesting mix as well. I suppose Ryan Reynolds would be quite a funny guy to add in, just for the fact that he's just zany enough to love the idea of gremlins and he's proved as well that he is absolutely hilarious and he can do horror films as well yes but i mean not all horror movies are technically r-rated but i would also say trying to mutate them a bit more to the extent where instead of it being just like a little bit bigger and a bit more deadly i'd make it so they mutate into like the size of people yeah 
So then you, because the thing is, when they do mutate, they get claws, which is quite cool, and they do slash, but you never see it. And I mean, it's just the whole idea of Gremlins as a whole is just such a weird movie. And I hope the origin series does give a better picture in terms of what they're trying to sell in this these movies at all, because obviously they. Mr. Wing had to have been able to know how to look after these creatures, which would then mean that they were a mass amount of them in China, I suppose. Yeah. So how do you hide away such so many tiny little furry things from the rest of society without getting them wet, without feeding them at the wrong time and not getting them in direct sunlight? Again, these three rules... It's an interesting idea, but it's caused more havoc than needs be for this movie. Logistically, I don't know how. <laughs> it's bugging me to figure that out. I mean, the thing is as well, is China's quite a wet country because there's a lot of open areas where there's running rivers and stuff like that. So the poor things are going to multiply like bloody bunnies. I know. <laughs> but now I think that's about it for today's rant. I mean, it's such a bonkers movie. It truly is. It's a good movie to watch if you've got nothing better to do, but it's just utter nonsense. Yeah. Uh, sure. So that's it for my topic this week. Next week, of course, will be Jack's turn once again, and we are discussing what exactly, dude? You lot are going to friggin' hate me for this. You're going to hate me because I'm going to crap on a lot of the things that you love, but it's going to be unpopular opinions. So we're going to be talking films, TV series, all that kind of jazz. And one of them in particular, just to get you started as a bit of a taster, is that unpopular opinion. I think Game of Thrones is basically Lord of the Rings, a Lord of the Rings, but a porno. Yeah, well, yes, that's uh, an interesting topic to go over, but we have to make sure that the YouTube and Twitch police don't monetize, well, don't scrutinize us for using such words. So we'll have to be careful next week, regardless. Uh, oh, yeah, and also, Pan's Labyrinth is not a good film. I don't know why it's a classic. It's rubbish. <laughs> yeah, I'm never sorry. really. I'm sorry, but it, it's a rubbish film. <laughs> Never really got intrigued by it. The only thing I liked was the uh, aesthetic of some of the monsters. But again, it wasn't that scary. It was just a fever dream of somebody on certain drugs. But one thing, film we're going to have to talk about, which is a cult classic, The Room. <laughs> yes. Do you remember yes. The Room? I've seen some of it. It's Oh, hi, Mark. No, I did not hit her. <laughs> Do you remember Oh, that? hi, Mark. I can't remember that bit. All I know is, oh, hi, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to talk about the room. Yeah, yeah. You're tearing me apart, Lisa. <laughs> well, that's going to be the subject for next week. So have fun. And yeah, you're probably going to be hating us after that one. So we'll yes. see you next week. <laughs> Yeah, so again, folks, thanks for joining us. Stay safe. Stay safe, not stay safe. Stay safe. Okay. Stay, <laughs> stay safe. <laughs> I have. Stay safe, stay home, and hopefully we'll get through all this lockdown nonsense sooner or later. So, see you next week. Bye, guys. <laughs>